Hello guys, welcome to my video today. Our topic of discussion is correlational hypothesis. Uh, by the end of this video, I believe that you will be able to understand what correlational hypothesis is and also various types of correlational hypothesis as well. Um, it is very basic um, information, uh, but it is very crucial when it comes to understanding anything that is there in your syllabus at all, right? So let's get started. Um, so let's let's imagine this. Um, a researcher gets a question in his or her mind. He is intrigued and wants to know: um, Does smoking uh, would smoking cause lung cancer? Right. This is a question that comes to his or her mind. Can smoking uh, lead to lung cancer? Or let it be um, vitamin C. Does vitamin C have anything to do with acne outbreak at all, right? So the next step for the researcher would be to make a hypothesis, right? So there are two ways in which you can make a hypothesis. The first one would be correlational hypothesis or you can make a causation hypothesis, okay? So first let's consider what correlational hypothesis would look like, okay? And, and then... Uh, Let's clarify what the difference between these two would be. A correlational hypothesis would look something like this. Can intake of vitamin C, which is variable 1, affect variable 2, which is acne outbreak? So what does this mean? Here you are assuming that variable 1 can have some effect on variable 2. You do not know what kind of effect it is going to have. You don't know if it is going to, uh, you know, be positive uh, to your skin or you have no idea if it is going to aggravate your uh, acne outbreak. You have no idea. You are just assuming that there is some effect uh, to this, to vitamin C on your skin, okay? So whenever you are assuming a relationship, some sort of relationship, and not saying that, hey, this is going to help this or this is going to, uh, you know, negatively affect this, you're just, whenever you say that there is some sort of relationship, you, it is called a correlational hypothesis, okay? When you assume variable one has some effect on variable two, it is always a correlational hypothesis, okay? So... Now, you did some research online and you found few articles um, and which, which says that it is actually good for your skin, okay? Now, you found few, um, you know, articles which says it is an antioxidant and therefore it is going to reduce your acne outbreak. Now, things change. Now, you want to change your, um, your, um, what, your hypothesis okay so now you're going to assume vitamin c intake increases your acne outbreak is going to reduce okay so before it was vitamin c can affect acne outbreak and you didn't know how it is going to affect now you're assuming when you take more vitamin c it is good for your skin and the acne outbreak will go down so what is the difference between these two the only difference I'd say is the direction, right? The direction of the variable. You are actually assuming that when one goes up, the other goes down. It is called a directional hypothesis. Let it be any sort of relationship. As long as you are predicting some kind of direction, you call it a directional hypothesis or a one-tailed hypothesis oops what hypothesis okay that's it okay now this one where you are not predicting any kind of relationship you call it as a two-tailed hypothesis okay in here the direction can go either ways it can positively affect or negatively affect. Then you call it a two-tail hypothesis. And when you're specifying the direction, 
it is a one-tailed hypothesis. All right. Now let's consider another um, example: smoking and lung cancer. So we are going to assume now that the more a person smokes, the more chances of lung cancer. Okay. Here also we are assuming a direction and therefore it is a directional hypothesis or a one-tailed hypothesis but this is also called as a positive hypothesis sorry positive correlation right why because we are assuming when go one goes up the other goes up as well it's in the same direction we can put the same hypothesis in a different way when smoking reduces, the lesser the chances of lung cancer. This is still positive correlation. Why? As long as both variables are going in the same direction, you call it a positive correlation. All right. And in this case, vitamin C goes up, the acne outbreak goes down. So now that will be a negative correlation okay so to summarize we can say that a negative correlation is when you specify that when one variable goes up the other goes down a positive correlation is when you specify one goes when one variable goes up the other variable goes up or one variable goes down the other variable goes down which means that as long as the direction of the variables are predicted the same it is a positive correlation yeah and when you assume um, a positive or a negative correlation between variables it is called a directional hypothesis or a one-tailed hypothesis and a two-tailed hypothesis would be when you are assuming that there is a relationship between variable 2 and variable 1 but you are not specifying the kind of direction okay so with this, I think we are wrapping up our um, video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any doubts, feel, feel free to uh, include that in the comment section. And yes, thank you for watching. Bye.